there and welcome to another episode of Interama. I know it's been a while since the last episode and I know I'll sound a little bit cliche if I say that. I apologize for it. But I, I, I truly do. Uh, I, I've been meaning to, to record another episode of uh, this series for a long time, but my, my my current schedule is really, really hectic. In fact, I'm a little bit behind schedule on my City Skyline series as well. So hopefully uh, this uh, isn't too bad. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still planning on finishing this whole park. Uh, by no means I'm rushing it or anything like that. And, uh, you know, this episode was starting things off by taking advantage of uh, one of the newer features that was released in, uh, in an update, I think it was like a couple weeks ago, uh, which is uh, the fact that we can upload or import our own uh, artwork into the game. So I decided to replace the main park's uh, logo with the actual proper logo of Interama, or at least uh, the logo that I use on uh, on the opening uh, titles for this series. I think it looks much, much better. Uh, the Yeah, the font choices for the previous logo were not great. In, in general, the signs in this game are not like very detailed or very... You know the, the type. Of, I know I talked about this before, so I'm not re not going to repeat myself. But uh, yeah, the the font choices for the game are not great. Uh, even though it, it's weird to me because the whole UI looks kind of great in general. It's I don't know something odd about it. But uh, in any case, uh, I decided to replace it with the uh, the proper uh, inner Inner Amat logo. Man, I can't I can't really talk today. But, um, talking about the logo, in case you haven't heard, uh, about a week ago, I launched the official merch store for uh, the channel, which uh, includes uh, multiple products, ranging from shirts to clocks to notebooks to laptop sleeves to phone cases and whatnot. And uh, many of them are branded with the channel and some other in some other cases with some of my series. So you can find uh, the on the road shirts or the senior shirts. And of course, you can find a whole bunch of Interama products too. So if you want to help support the channel, uh, you can go check out the link that's in the description, strictoaster.com slash store. And uh, you can just browse all the products that, that we have. Uh, by default, you're just gonna see the, you know, like a shirt or stickers with the with the logos. But if you click on each one of those designs, it will show you everything else. The, the, the store is not particularly like, you know, well-designed, but um, it's, uh, the products themselves are actually pretty high quality. I order a couple for myself just to, you know, be able to test it before I post uh, things out there. So if you wanna support the channel, uh, you know, uh, how to do it and uh, that's that's all the self-advertising I'm gonna do for now in this episode I guess uh, the the main thing that's gonna take place is this ride which is uh, well it's I'm gonna say it's an homage to an actual ride that uh, exists in this uh, park in fact it's a pretty popular ride uh, in many uh, parks actually I was doing a little bit of research uh, by the way this ride is called the Wildcat um, um, that's you know it's it's a, it's a ride that um, was first designed in 1964. By the way, I have uh, on my second screen a Wikipedia page with some details that I was able to find. These are actually being translated from German, so it could be a total disaster as I'm trying to tell you the technical details of it. But uh, it it has uh, multiple variants that go. For example, the the highest uh, model I guess uh, can go to 14.5 meters and as low as 10.5 meters you know tall and uh, they could have a length between 420 meters to 560 meters this um this ride is originally designed by shorks sorry i'm, I'm gonna this is just gonna be a terrible <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna probably say it but it's shorts cough gmbh that's what I'm trying to read here. Apparently that translates to blackhead, according to to Google in this case. Um, so yeah, don't take, take that with a grain of salt. That is probably not the right way of saying it or the proper translation. But uh, this is, you know, a pretty uh, old design that is actually being featured on a lot of parks. Like I, I'm counting the list here. It's way over 30 parks have uh, this ride in particular. Uh, the one we're looking at right now, it's, uh, I mean, I 
I, I, I gotta be honest, as I was working on this ride, which was uh, the first time that I'm actually working on a proper uh, roller coaster in this uh, in this park, it uh, it took uh, a little bit of work uh, and several tries, and even at the end, I, I wasn't, you know, I couldn't really replicate the original design. I, I struggled a lot by copying sort of the same measurements of it, like trying to, you know, uh, match the ultimate height of it and all the drops and everything else. So I kind of played it by ear. So consider this an homage to the original Wildcat. The design is pretty much similar. However, the one I end up, uh, you know, showing you on the screen doesn't, it's just missing one extra loop on one of the ends. So um, other than that, it's pretty accurate uh, in terms of uh, footprint, not so much in height. I think it's actually double the, not double, but I would say 150% the height of the original one. Uh, not only that, uh, the I guess the size of the of this whole ride is a little bit bigger than the one in the real park. So I ended up placing it in a slightly different uh, area than where it's originally located. And uh, as you can see here, I'm uh, tweaking these. Um, these towers for the cable cars, because uh, since this location wasn't, you know, prepared for such a huge, uh, you know, construction, I had to move them around a little bit. And while I was at it, this is something that I've been uh, thinking of doing for a while now, which is by default, the blueprints that I use for these towers were uh, basically blacked and for, you know, the first batch of towers that we added several episodes ago, I kept that black, but I realized the towers uh, in the real park are white, and uh, to be honest, I, I kind of look how they contrast better uh, with the surroundings. The the black towers kind of like sort of mix in between uh, the foliage, uh, the vegetation, everything else. So the white towers really do stand out a lot more, and they you can see them from the distance too which is, uh, you know, an aesthetic choice that I decided to keep. So you can compare the two, the black one, the bottom one over there, and the white one. Eventually, I'm going to turn uh, that one and paint it completely white as well. So that's part of what I'm doing here. But uh, since the next big thing that I'm going to be working on in uh, future episodes or the, you know, the very next episode, most likely, is this uh, terminal right here. I just uh, wanted to sort of set everything up so that, uh, you know, the wildcat and all the decorations around it sort of fit the area properly. And uh, this is just me starting uh, the detail work as I'm, well, first uh, testing how everything looks like. But um, obviously, as I was uh, working on this ride, many of the supports uh, we're gone. Uh, I think uh, the reason for that is mainly because, well, supports can't really go on uh, the tracks that are below. So they're kind of floating there in the air and I decided to create my own supports. They're by no means perfect. Uh, I could have gone way more detail with this, but I wanted to have some basic supports that uh, can make this design look a little bit more feasible. Obviously, uh, painting them uh, the right colors. In this case, it's uh, light blue, and I'm using a combination of uh, wood planks and, uh, well, these tile sets, the one meter tile sets that I've been using a lot, mostly so that I get the, uh, well, first of all, to, gr to be able to group all these props into one building. That's the, the, main ish, the, the main reason why I did it. And second, because by using the one meter props, you get the one meter grid, which makes things uh, way easier to deal with. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm trying to align some of these uh, wood planks so that uh, they hug the rotation of uh, the curve as, uh, as the track goes around on, on, on the different uh, areas. In this case, is, for the most part, all these custom supports, by the way, I added them on, on the sides, which is where most of the you know, vanilla supports, I guess, uh, were missing. Now, at the top of uh, this climb, there's a bit of a structure with a tower and some lights. So what you see me do right now is, well, it's exactly that. I'm, I'm sort of creating the support for it. And it does have, uh, you know, the top part of it kind of matches the color of, uh, of the tracks of the coaster. So that's why I painted that in that, you know, kind of like unfinished primer red. And at the very top, we go into the whites by adding a lot of lights. 
and uh, a bit of a metallic mesh that I think I'm gonna tackle in a second. Uh, just overall, even though I wasn't able to, you know, exactly copy, you know, perfectly matching the scale to, of the ride, absolutely, I, I was actually pretty happy with how it came out. Uh, when you see there, by the way, there's a lot of cinematics at the end of this episode. There's a, a POV of this uh, coaster, of course, and there's a whole bunch of cool camera tricks that I was trying. So um, you're going to be able to see some interesting cinematics at the end. But uh, the whole ride looks great. Um, I think uh, I think it's pretty smooth. I think obviously it can be improved uh, if I had more time, which I didn't. Unfortunately, this this was uh, basically this took me the whole weekend to get this video out, which is not a, a lot of time that I have often to dedicate to these kinds of projects. But uh, uh, I was I was having fun to be honest, and I just decided to go for it. And uh, hopefully you can uh, tell that I was indeed having fun because I, I did spend some time on details that I don't often uh, spend a lot of time uh, as you're going to see in just a moment when I started, for example, detailing the, the the area around the queue and the main, well, the main station there. Uh, there appears to be some lights hanging on the sides of this uh, climb, by the way, which I try to uh, replicate using the supports that the game already created for me. But uh, since the lights kind of like come towards uh, one of the sides, uh, hopefully I can show you some photos on the screen right now so you can uh, see what I'm talking about. But um, these lights kind of like come from the side. So instead of having a huge structure, uh, as I did on on the on the turns on the edges of the ride, I just decided to sort of hanging from the main support, as I was saying before, and I think it came out great. Pretty happy with that. They they look like they integrate uh, pretty much so. The the tests were fine. I had you know at first obviously a ton of issues uh, getting uh, the trains to actually ride the whole way. Uh, it definitely does slow down a little bit towards the end. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely not an expert in any of this. I'm I'm really really playing it by ear. Um, but uh, I don't know. It it looks believable or plausible. That's what I was aiming for. In any case, switching gears uh, there for a moment. I'm uh, now starting to detail the uh, well the main station here and uh i show you just a second ago a couple of photos of uh what this you know what this platform looks like in real life or what at least what it used to look like and uh you know it's a pretty simple uh building really it only has uh, well it has a, a you know corrugated metal uh roof at the top and uh, some pillars that hold everything together so there isn't you know a pretty huge structure i was trying to find uh, you know pillars that would uh, work better. They're not that many metallic pillars aside from these columns and those anchors that I was uh, playing with just a moment ago, they didn't look great to be honest. So I decided to stick to these, um, these, uh, I think they're iron columns or I think they even under, uh, under chimneys if I'm not mistaken. But uh, in any case, these uh, fit the design much, much better. Uh, in just a moment, uh, you're going to see me change the color of these so that uh, they match the original colors, which are actually white. And uh, obviously the whole metal area that uh, holds the roof together is, uh, in this case, painted yellow. Uh, it does have a bit of a pattern painted to it. Um, I. I don't know how to properly replicate that. However, in just a couple of minutes, you're going to see me add uh, some lights that do resemble the original design. Now, what I did there is I duplicated the building so that the other half, um, you know, just sort of uh, covered the tracks, but not everything else. Uh, these things don't really match in terms of the actual sizes so when you move them uh, to the other side. So. I just decided to split the roof into buildings and, and you know, have two slopes coming to, to different uh, uh, directions, I guess. Uh, and uh, I also decided on purpose not to cover the entire the entire platform, just leave a segment of that, uh, you know, be on unroofed. And uh, over here, I'm uh, working on a bit of a metal structure that will hold together the sign the famous uh, wildcat sign that has some lights in uh, the letters. It has like like 3D extruded letters. So I was trying to, you know, try all these 
weird signs. As I said at the end of the episode, the, the, the typography here is not great. So I ended up resourcing to the uh, Steam Workshop. And uh, I, you know, I simply just grabbed one of these, uh, uh, well, fonts, I guess. You can call them that, uh, from uh, someone who basically took the time to spell the entire alphabet with uh, with shapes. So I'm just uh, forming the word Wildcat right there. I think it looks great, obviously, changing the color of it, and in this case, using the one meter uh, little tile detail so that I can group or keep the group of all this together and position it wherever I want. In this case, right in the middle of that metal structure, even though later on I will, you know, increase the height of it because uh, it wasn't very visible from from the street level. Hopefully that will be uh, uh, illustrated uh, during uh, the cinematics. And uh, at the same time, I'm, you know, using uh, a bit of a uh, fence or including a bit of a fence there so that uh, this design with, you know, these fences painted yellow kind of matches the original design as well. Uh, also, I didn't want to have that floating platform there, so I decided to make everything concrete. Remember, several episodes ago, actually, I think it was like on episode two or something like that, I mentioned that since this is a bit of a government-owned uh, park, you know, landscaping and details are not the best, so everything looks a little bit brutalist, to say the least. So, you know, that's kind of this, the design that is still aiming for, uh, for the most part. So it's like a low budget kind of, uh, you know, design or aesthetic. And uh, these, these lights are, well, basically the details that I was telling you about just a moment ago. So that uh, these, you know, metal uh, edges of the roof kind of look like the one uh, in real life. And the last thing that I needed to do is to put some lights in, in, in general, specifically making that sign visible at night. Uh, originally the sign, as you saw from the photos before, they have like tiny little light bulbs uh, in between the letters. I don't think, I browsed through the assets, uh, you know, the available assets in the game and I couldn't find anything similar to that. So, you know, I just uh, decided to put some lights pointing towards it and it does look Quite nice, actually. I ended up uh, changing the color or the shade of color to those uh, later on. You'll probably see uh, they're tinted yellow, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, also, there's a lot of complaints about uh, people being thirsty, so I decided to put down one of these uh, restaurants. And uh, wow, now we're really switching gears here because uh, I decided to sort of extend... Okay, so let me rephrase this. There is a whole area of the of this park where the uh, wildcat is. Uh, in fact, the back part of the wildcat will feature uh, a bit of a lake and an island in it. So what doesn't exist in real life is this canal that I'm uh, doing right, right here, which I figured could be a nice idea to sort of connect them uh, or, you know, not necessarily connect them, but just to make it as this, as if this uh, canal is actually connected to this other canal that we worked on several episodes ago. So, you know, with a little bit of uh, terraforming here and there, uh, basically clone the same uh, concrete structure. There you go. Uh, and I put those pipes in there. I, I know I'm very like city skylining uh, the crap out of this game lately, but uh, I do think that looks really cool, to be honest, uh, just adding that extra level of detail that is not necessarily related to the park itself or what the visitors will see uh, and instead it's just like a functional thing but it does add quite a bit of detail to the whole uh, ambience in general and uh, in this case since this uh, back canal is kind of like secluded from the you know the foot traffic in general I just decided to make it a little bit rougher uh, and just have a ton of bushes on on each side and uh, this is, I mean, it, I think it came out fantastic. I love how this whole area looks. Uh, it's really, really cool. And, uh, you know, together with a whole bunch of trees that I'm going to be plopping in just a second. Well, I guess I'm already are plopping them right now. Uh, it's just a nice separation between the restaurant and the ride. And it just makes it look great. Uh, you're definitely going to see a detailed version of this uh, in the cinematics there. Uh, just a few moments away. We're almost done with this episode, by the way. But uh, the last thing that I wanted to do here is just add a few more rocks. Uh, and uh, we're also going to be adding some flowers as well. So that's, you know, there's a, a little bit of uh, color in there. And of course, I just didn't want to leave 
this uh, whole ride to be just sitting on the grass without uh, any details. So using uh, the terraforming brush a little bit and uh, in a moment you're gonna see me add a few more clusters of bushes, just uh, sprucing up the whole area so that it looks like it belongs a bit more. I might come back to this and add a few segments of concrete. So, I mean, these uh, rides are mostly, you know, the foundations is a huge concrete slab for the most part, but I didn't think that's, that was gonna look nice. So I just decided to do it with the brushes like I showed you a moment ago. And uh, as we add the final details to this time-lapse, by the way, please uh, prepare yourselves for a nice uh, POV of the roller coaster. I'll resume in just a second. And with that, it's time to put an end to this episode. If you enjoyed, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated and it does help a lot. Uh, however, if you're new to the channel and haven't already, I wanna encourage you to go click the subscribe button. That way you're notified immediately after one of my videos come out. In the description, you're gonna find uh, all of the links to my various social media accounts in case uh, you wanna get a hold of me for some reason. Uh, and uh, also, like I said uh, before, you can find uh, the link to the merch store in case you want to get a cool Interama t-shirt and also help uh, support the channel at the same time. Uh, finally, uh, you can find uh, the playlist with every single episode so far in case you might have missed one. But uh, that pretty much does it for this one. I want to thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next one.